I'm of the belief that being a real nice guy isn't good either. You know what I mean? Like, yeah, people talk about fake nice nice guys all the time. There's a couple ways that being a real nice guy can get you messed up in the game, right? And one way is this. When you're a real nice guy, something that can happen sometimes, you'll be overly empathetic and sympathetic and understanding when a woman can't be free. And instead of taxing a woman, you'll just let everything be cool. If she has a good excuse, you know, an excuse is an excuse, no matter how you slice it. You know what I mean? Like if she's not free, if she flakes, if she got, you know, whatever her excuse is, anything other than being on your program. Uh, another thing a, do, a nice guy, a genuine nice guy might do is if he meets a woman, let's say a woman tells him, you know, I can't have sex right now because I just got out of a long term relationship and I'm still caught up on my ex or a woman may tell you. It don't matter what the reason. It could even be a good reason. You know what? It, you know what? It, you know want to know something funny? Uh, a, a good reason could be this. And this is going to sound real controversial. You know, as a man, I think you should set that precedent. You know, if that's something that's important to you, you should set that precedent. But you shouldn't even deal with a woman whose mindset is she doesn't want to have sex with you because 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 uh, she wants to visibly see you go, go get tested first. Especially if you go get checked yourself know you good and whatnot but it's like it's one of those things to where if a woman wants you enough if a woman is too easily able to get in her logical mindset about her desire to fuck with you if that woman is too easily able to get into a mindset to where she creates a standard or a boundary that you feel that you need to to respect because you're nicer because you're understanding that is something that can easily flip the masculine feminine dynamic a woman can tell you you know, I'm a little depressed, so I don't feel in the mood to have sex. One thing to understand is this. It's like there's so many different reasons that a woman can give you as to why she doesn't want to do what you want to do. Right? So many reasons why. And where nice guys get messed up on one side is that they'll take those reasons in. They'll take those reasons seriously. And then based off of those reasons that the woman gave them, they will still continue to deal with and to give that woman time, attention, and energy. The woman may say, you know, I believe sex for marriage is a sin, so I'm celibate right now. So she may not be sexually available. Whatever reason a woman has to not be sexually available to you, it does not matter what the reason is. It doesn't. Because desire overrides fear. A great enough level of desire overrides fear. Like, let's say it could be a matter of a woman, you could tell a woman to come through to the crib, and then she could say, you know, I don't feel comfortable coming over to your house because, you know, I want to meet in public first. OK, cool. You know, she's not submissive enough for you. If that's your program, if that's what you like to do. Now, you can modify your program on your own terms to say, you know what? It, it, it does make more sense to get tested before you have sex with a new person or to make sure that you wear protection. It does make more sense sometimes to to go meet with an individual in public before you invite them into your home it can make more sense you know to do things a certain way but when you're doing those things on a woman's terms what you're doing is you're putting yourself in a position where she has power over it if you base if you allow a woman's mood or her circumstances to determine the flow of your relationships and your interactions with that woman and the paces pace of it that what you're doing is you're submitting yourself to her one way or another, whether that's to her convictions, her beliefs, her mood, her feelings, you know, how her day was. You're submitting yourself to her. And that's what nice guys don't get. That's one thing that, that messes nice guys up. That's one of the main things. And another thing is this right here. If you're going to deal with the woman after those instances come up, you need to tax her. Right. You need to tax it. And and nice guys will feel like that's wrong. They'll just say, you know, it's water beneath the bridge. They won't think anything of it. No, you need to tax it. Whatever reason a woman has to not be fully with your program, then the next step, the onus is on her to make that initiative. And if she doesn't make if she makes that initiative, then the onus is on you to make sure that the price goes up. The onus is on you to make sure that the investment that she has to make in you. She has to make up for the fact that she wasn't present the last time. Right. This is serious. This is serious because what you don't want to do is set a precedent of allowing a woman to deal with you whenever she wants to. 
on her own terms on her own time. This is advice that that people give women, you know, dating coaches give women. And it's terrible advice because you're only conditioning a woman to deal with a weak man or conditioning a woman to deal with a man who may only look like an alpha male on the surface or a man who just has money. But that doesn't make him an alpha male. That doesn't make him a man who has a masculine mindset. You know what I mean? And it may just be, you know, a woman could say, you know, I don't want to have sex because I'm celibate or I'm a virgin or whatever it is. Right. Some of that stuff could be lies. Some of it could be true. That same woman, that same day that she says she's not available to you, she could be available to somebody else. If somebody else asked her the same exact thing, she would have been down for it. What do you look like as a man giving or putting a woman on the pedestal of being your woman, especially on an exclusive level, if she is not fully available to you, but you're going to make yourself emotionally available and financially available and your, your time, making yourself available time-wise and available in all these different ways and open and honest understanding and, and honest and down for whatever. But that woman can't even be submissive with you. Like, what do you look like? You look like a clown. Big red nose. Big red nose. So if these are just some things to think about. Like, these are some things that get nice guys messed up, you know. And I think one thing about nice guys that they can also get people messed up is this understanding of entitlement, right? When people talk about entitlement, when they're talking about relationships, one way that this tends to go wrong is this right here. If somebody tells you what they want from you or what they want from someone to you, knowing that you want them and you do what they say that they want in order to get what you want from them, and then when you do what they want and they don't give you what you want, that's called being entitled? No, that's called gaslighting. Women call men gaslighters, but a lot of women are notorious gaslighters. What you got to understand is the fact that you're doing anything on a woman's terms in the first place, you already fucked up. The fact that you're already being submissive with her and following her lead in the relationship and doing things her way, you're already messing up. You're already showing signs of weakness. And there's nothing wrong with a man having emotions, but you're showing a lack of emotional discipline. You can't then flip around and tell a woman, I want to do things my way. You can try, but good luck with that. Good luck. Now, if you're willing to be manipulative, if you're willing to be a, a guy who, who tries to be a nice guy, then flip the switch. Like you're you're really a fake nice guy. Like if you're really a fake nice guy, you might be able to pull that off if you're attractive enough. If you got enough game, you might be able to pull that off, maybe. But if you're if you're a genuine nice guy, it's not going to work for you. It's not going to work for you because you're going to be genuine to who you are throughout your interactions with, with that woman. Or, or, you know, because you're genuine to who you are because you're genu genuinely a generous person who is understanding, who is empathetic and sympathetic, and you just understand the shit comes up. You try to deal with women the same way that you deal with your homies, right? You try to deal with women the same way you deal with your homies. If your homies say he can't make it, it's cool. If your homies say, you know, whatever's going on, he can't do this, can't do that, that's fine. You don't need your homie to be submissive with you. I understand it's a partnership. But what you got to understand, <laughs> men respect men for being equals. Women only respect men who are better than them in some, in some capacity. If you are not better than her in some type of way, and she can acknowledge that to herself. She does not respect you. It could be mentally. It could be sexually. It could be financially. Sometimes it's, it's different ways. But some of these ways you have to know within yourself what you respect yourself for. And then what that woman respects as well. But don't even base it off of what that woman thinks or what she believes or what her ideas are. Don't ask a woman what she's looking for. Stop that bullshit. Stop asking a woman what she's looking for. Nice guy, stop that shit. Tell her what it is. If that woman likes you, whatever you say it is, she's going to be ecstatic about it. And if she don't like you, she's not going to fuck with it. And sometimes she'll pretend not to like it as a test because she already sees you as a nice guy. And she may come back around later on and change her mind and change her perspective, right? But then that's when you tax her, because a lot of times these games that a woman plays when she isn't on your program is really a test. She's really testing you to see if you're really about this masculine stance that you take.
But if you change your point of view without that woman having the opportunity to come back to you, you messed up. And sometimes she's going to walk away and she's going to stay gone. Let that bitch stay gone. She dead to you. Honestly. And you just got to understand that. You got to understand that and, and stop, you know, always trying to beat a dead horse. So, you know, this is just some advice for genuine nice guys. Some game for genuine nice guys. Just some things to understand. Not even fake nice guys. Fake nice guys do better in the game than than, than real nice guys. All right. So, you know, Brody Dharma out.